All right, what's up, Airheads? We're back once again. Time for another stirring rendition of putting on airs. We're here in the virtual airstream studios. I'm Trey, and that's Corey. Corey, we got I, I don't know about you, but I feel like we're we got a little bit of uh, I don't know if eating crow is the right term for how I'm feeling right now, but uh, yeah. I don't feel too great about our uh, recent little expose or deep dive into the Kate Middleton situation. I don't know how everybody else who participated in that is feeling. It's weird. I don't know if it's because she's young and pretty and stuff, but it literally never occurred to me that I don't think that hurts. It could be something like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, like, me either. Like if I had thought of that, you know, maybe would have wouldn't have been quite so cavalier. I don't even remember what all we said about. Yeah, I mean, we were speculating she was fucking antiquities dealers and in well, a coma and stuff. So, well, to, to, <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, like, no, she has cancer. To be like, well, fair, now I feel bad. To be fair, we were commenting on what the popular speculations were, and I do believe we got a little cavalier with it, yes. But it's to defend us, again, I, I'm also sorry because it's fucked up, but to defend us, like, we didn't come up with them ideas ourselves. I was just reporting what the news was. And honestly, I feel double bad about it uh, because, like, I literally just went on a rant yesterday and I didn't say this phrase, but like the whole premise of it was basically like no one it's like no one's heard of Occam's razor anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every single thing like used to there was like, you know, eight kind of conspiracy theories and like everybody just kind of fit into those camps. But now, like nothing can possibly happen without immediately everyone going to what's the most convoluted fucking explanation that could possibly be. It's definitely that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, we suck. I suck. I'm the one that brought it up. So yeah, so the deal is, and that's all. It's all like confirmed, and people believe this, right? Like she no she came out and put a video out that nobody has said is a deep fake, and I mean it looked real. It came from her account, and um, I'm not saying this to be funny. I I, I wouldn't. She looked different. I I wouldn't necessarily say sickly, but like super sickly. But like you can definitely tell, like she's been you know, hold up and going through some shit. Yeah. Well, that's not, not nearly as fun as, you know, we'd, we'd hoped, but on, on a more fun Royal <laughs> family note, I don't know if you knew this already or not, but I found out this week because uh, our buddy smart Mark sent us a little link uh, to some literature on the subject. Apparently King Charles got a hog on him, big old, Big old royal wiener. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's been packing this whole time. And I got to say, I am kind of surprised by that. I, I am I, too. I don't think I would have pegged him as as packing major heat, you know? Yeah. I mean, I hear you because he definitely, and a lot of those like aristocratic British dudes kind of like almost reek of, I'm doing all of this to make up for something. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? But he is inbred. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I won't say true. what type of people those people often turn out to be, but I will say they've yeah. got hangers. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And what, strong. What? Woo. But this, the thing that Mark sent us, wasn't it like a, like a snippet from a tabloid from years ago or yeah, something? Yeah, there's a Meaning picture like, of his dick. Right. Meaning this ain't new information. Right. Well, why ain't, you know, how come people don't know about this? I don't I would, know. I don't think you'd think the king's dick, it being you know, sizable and everything, right. would be something that would uh would have like come if, up. Yeah, and if I was him, I would be like secretly putting out press releases or like leaking this information. You know what I mean? Because that's got to help with a certain like the Witherspoons part of your base. That's got to hit for them. You know what I mean? What what is this? Where did the? Well, I mean, we're not. I'm not going to show y'all a picture of King Charles's dick. But this uh -huh. is what is this? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like we might get in trouble for that. Well, well, apparently, yeah. apparently, ever no one else ever gets in trouble for any of those rules Just except us. us. Like, I, you know, all the stuff we ain't allowed to say or put on YouTube or any of our socials or whatnot. And then fucking, I Drew will send us an Instagram clip of some dude and fucking. Uzbekistan pulling his dick out for some reason. Yeah, and calling his dog the N word or something. Yeah, like, like I don't understand how any of that works. I mean, it's because we are white. God right. damn it! I've been saying it. Yeah, but anyway, I don't. This picture, or 
I don't know. I just wonder what kind of magazine this is. Over there, I think they'll they show they're tabloidy. Right. But I'm saying over yeah. there, like our tabloids yeah. over here are regular tabloids. They won't show dicks. Yeah. Right? They're more Correct? progressive over there. But over there, they will show dicks in their tabloids. Yeah. And I think in their tabloids they have what's it called? Like page six girls or something like that, where it's just like uh that you know, they Spread just have, butt. have a naked lady in there yeah. every week just because that hits. Um, and it does hit. <laughs> yes. You know, yes, like, it does. Say what yeah. you will. No, yeah. Teddy's out here fighting the war against wokeness. God bless their souls. I know, man. Uh, yeah, that's what really, everybody says. Really appreciate uh, them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wild, that's a wild thing that's going on. Apparently, uh people have decided Sydney Sweeney's big old rack is on the front lines of the war against the woke mind virus or something. Um, yeah. Which I'm not I mean. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing off the top of my head that really pisses me off is how we are as divided as this country is. As divided, let's face it, it has always been a divided country. Let's not act like we didn't have a civil war. Let's not act like people didn't have to vote to get women the vote and Jim Crow laws and all this shit. But like there have always been unifiers in this country there have been bridges in this country where no matter what you believe when we're talking about this thing or that thing or watching this sport we're all fucking just americans and god damn it titties i thought was one of them i did not think that a hot blonde with a super rock and knockers uh just existing could somehow in itself in the minds of others be a political statement and it's pissing me off and also i would like to add uh, cause you know, we don't discuss politics on this show and I'm sure people don't even know where we stand. So it, yes, but know, this is Teddy adjacent. I know. No, no, no. I know. I'm, I'm just prefacing it by saying like, you know, <laughs> people like out there, different. yeah, pe people out there don't know whether I'm Republican or Democrat. I've always been very sure. secretive about that. Yeah. You had uh, it. Well, the Johnny Carson rule, you know what I mean? You know, half the audience voted for Nixon. Uh, so anyways, I am upset with the liberals, uh, who I may or may not be a part of that you have somehow let slip from your grasp tittiness and sexuality as yeah. one of the defining characteristics of your whole goddamn movement. But I don't buy that that's actually happened. That's I don't I, either, but why the are they saying that are making it? the argument? But I, I don't know. It's like the... I feel like the people who are talking about titties is fighting against wokeness are the same people that, like, you know... Uh, think that every woman who shows any amount of skin is a whore yeah, or right. will shame them for being whores and right. they're super Jesus-y and Christian and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, fucking Christians don't like titties. They're all Whereas over the place. The other side, the side that they hate, the woke side is the side of like fucking polyamorous pansexual butt fucking, butt -fucking stuff. Yeah. All kinds of butt fucking. And it's like, you think y'all get titties? I don't get how... I don't understand the logic. But that's I don't. What they, I don't either. And and this is going to contradict everything we've just said. And frankly, it will contradict our entire careers. But like, I think we got to start ignoring them <laughs> because yeah. like that's. I I don't think they believe it either. But they their whole thing is like tears, the liberal tears or whatever, and getting everybody all upset and flustered. I don't know. Maybe we just got to start giving they, the liberals, whoever they are, they just got to start giving them this. Just like, yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead. Live in your fucking padded cell where you think that we hate titties. Maybe, I guess. I don't know. It's a, it's a thought. But speaking of hot rocking babes, I had another picture of Queen Victoria that I thought was funny. Uh, Show it. You yeah. see my screen? Yep. Sure can. So this picture of Queen Victoria photobombing her son's wedding by sitting between him and his bride while wearing a full <laughs> morning dress and staring at a bust of her dead husband. <laughs> Look at that, dude. You talk about a monster in law or whatever. Like, I mean, imagine oh that. God. It's your imagine what his bride is thinking. Also, the look on his face is just yeah. like the fuck you gonna do. I mean, his bitch mama better have my money. His mama's the queen. What are you gonna do? But she's like, she's like, I hope, I hope no one has forgotten that some people's husbands are dead. You know, <laughs> yeah. also, whatever. Like, I, I guess that's why she's doing this. What do you? I mean, why would you do this? I don't know. I have, dude. I mean, they're inbred. You know what I mean? I said it before, but like. Yeah. I don't know, man, but like, dude, this wouldn't go near as hard if she was just looking straight forward. It right. still, it still would be like, hey, 
you know, it, this is our wedding, our time. And it maybe it's a little weird to have the dead husband there, but like her just like staring at it, looking like the cover of a fucking smashing pumpkins album is like, it's, it's great. Like, she had all of this in her mind made some sort of sense. I know that's what I'm and, saying. Like, and what, I, how? Like, what I do can't you think. <laughs> I can't <laughs> decide if it's like a. It's like I feel if you're any type of royalty, not just a queen, you know, king, whatever. Every you're so used to everything being about you that you instinctually make everything about you. So it's either that, or in some fucked up way, she thought this was like artistic and sentimental and that it would hit in that way it's one of the two and both are stupid and didn't work it could just be that she's like because it says her dead husband i'm a and that's her son who's getting married so i'm assuming that's his father but i'm not sure maybe he had a different father and that guy also died and this is her second husband i don't know i'm not up on my you know victorian era prince consorts but if that's her if that's his dad then i could see it just being like a you know an eccentric take on a family photo or right. something, but like but, the fact that she like seems to not be, she won't dang right. to look at either the camera or her son. Right. Like it does make it way funnier. Yeah. It's like, she's L- just like, like, you know, if the bride and the groom were standing together and she was standing beside the groom looking at the camera and the dead husband was where he is. And it was just, everything was normal beside that. I'd go, okay, they, Want, they didn't have a family portrait of the wedding. The only thing they they didn't have Photoshop back then, but they but they're royal, so of course they had a marble bust of this motherfucker's head. Right. And I would get that. It is purely the the fucking. She looks like Matilda's principal. Like it just yeah, yeah. looking in. I don't know. It's crazy. But dude, they was wild back then. Also, I guess you got to figure like. This is a, one of the earliest pictures. They didn't know what you were supposed to do. <laughs> that's a hundred percent true. I mean, that's a very good point. Also, yeah. like the way that I mean, it's been covered a million times by other people, but like they always look kind of they look very dour and and almost and usually creepy and stuff in those pictures. But that's because they had to sit there for like forty five minutes yeah. or something, and so a like, thing exploded. You, you can't hold a smile for forty five minutes, you know. No. So and also <laughs> like. They'd take pictures of their dead relatives and stuff because pictures were a novel concept. And it's like, this is a way to remember this person who's now gone. But then you look at a picture and you're like, you know, oh, that baby is dead in that picture. You find that out. And it's like, it just makes, they're always so creepy, but it, you know, it just was the way it was. What, dude, not even just the 45 minutes it takes to get a picture taken, but like you got to also factor in the hour lecture they had before of someone going, list, don't listen to Rasputin. It's not going to take your soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause people right. used to think that they're like, you take a picture. It takes, it's like a horcrux. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And these people are by definition, like they believe in the mystic type things right. and Satan and stuff, because they literally believe that they were ordained by God. So they take that shit very seriously. You know what Korean papaws think will take your soul? Um, not using a wok. Ceiling fans. Really? Yeah. I, huh. I, it's either, I don't know if it's... Like it sucks it up. Specifically ceiling fans or just all fans. Because I remember I always remembered it because it's like they think if you sleep with a, either a ceiling fan or any kind of fan on, it'll like suck your soul up or kill you or something like that. And... uh I always remember that because, like, sleeping with a fan hits so hard. So hard. You sleep with a fan sleeper? I love sleeping with I can't with a fan. not. We have a right. box fan in our bedroom just for that. And it's also, it's not just the, for me at least, it's not just the I need air circulating. Otherwise, I, even if it's cool inside, if there's no air circulating, I feel like I'm in, like, a swamp or something. Uh, but also the sound of the box fan, like, that white noise, like, it, it it just yeah dude fan no i can't do no fan so fan death is a misconception that people have died as a result of running an electric fan so it's not a ceiling fan it is any fan so the hitness type of sleeping situation they think the misconception that people have died as a result of running an electric fan in a closed room with no open windows while the supposed mechanics of fan death are impossible given how fans be i'm paraphrasing and, here yeah uh, belief in fan death persisted all the way into the mid-2000s in South Korea and, to a lesser extent, in Japan. 
as well. Where the idea came from is unclear, but fears about electric fans date back to their introduction to Korea with stories from the 1920s and 30s warning of risk of nausea, asphyxiation, and facial paralysis from the new technology. Uh, there's a conspiracy theory that the South Korean government at the time perpetuated this myth as a form of propaganda to curb the energy consumption in South <laughs> Korean households during the 70s energy there it is. crisis. <laughs> there it is. People were using too much. But <laughs> Slate has reported that it goes back way further than that, so that can't be the explanation. So, Man, it's wild uh, how, like, because I think you, when, you first, when you first hear something like this, your knee-jerk reaction is to go, what fucking idiots? But like, ev not every person who believed that was an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, it, and it's crazy how like there's there's other examples of this type of thing where it's like someone said something once, and no matter how ridiculous it was, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? And like, no matter how much technology changes around you, like a lot of like older southern not all of you because i know a lot of older people listen to the podcast i'm not blanketing that a lot of older people southerners is the only one i can speak of like will not eat meat unless it is well done because they are convinced yeah. it will kill them because back when they was kids like it might have woulda even though it's been proven now like dude you don't have to do that but they still they still won't and like i want to call all those people stupid but there's too many of them and like they oh, they ain't all stupid it's just shit gets in your brain you're like no this shit yeah do you know and like pork um don't have to be comp no, yeah you can pork, do it medium rare you can eat pork medium if you want to yeah. it's like it's fine it, I that do. was a that was a yeah it hits harder that was a way thing. harder that was a a disease or called like trichinosis or something which like i believe there's not been a confirmed case of it in like 40 fucking years or something like that. But it, but used to, if you didn't cook pork all the way through, you could get trichinosis and that shit would fuck you up. But again, not now, not since before the, either of us were born, has that been a real thing? But yet a lot of people still won't eat pork if it's got any kind of, if it ain't cooked all the way through. Do you know, do you follow the chicken guy, the chicken boy or the chicken feller on, uh, on Instagram? <laughs> Those three different people. I don't they know. I, chicken beef with each other. You, I think you're more of a chicken <laughs> feller, man, but some people prefer the chicken guy. Me, I like professor chicken because <laughs> yeah. I'm a little more highbrow. Uh, well, I'll be honest with you. This guy, prop, the, the moniker professor chicken actually fits him a little bit more because he is kind of dressed nice, seems well to do. And I believe. You're talking about he, Colonel Sanders, are you? No. Fuck no. <laughs> That would be funny. You'd be like he's some kind of chicken professional. <laughs> he dresses real nice. It seems. To... <laughs> no, there's this guy on Instagram, and I think his handle. I'll I'll try to look it up after the show. But like, he his handle is something like Raw Chicken Challenge or something. Oh. And so he and so he started he started out. He was like, all right. It started as a joke, kind of like he wasn't really going to do it a lot. But then like he got a bunch of followers, and he's like. It, he he starts off the video like day whatever of me eating raw chicken yeah. until I get a tummy ache, right? Yes. Well, like he's on like day 62 and not only has he not been sick, by the way, he's he's eating them in comp all different ways. Like he's making chicken sushi. He And he also drinks a glass of raw eggs when he's doing it. Not only has he not gotten sick, but he looks he's jacked great. as fuck. He, he's not. I don't know if he's jacked. He, he don't take like, his shirt he off. Looks but like Rocky Balboa. He, he looks good. Like I can notice a difference in like his skin from the first video and now. And like I don't know. I I guess I'd have to go back and look at his mission statement. Uh, but like I don't know if the whole thing he's doing is is trying to be like, hey, uh, you can eat raw chicken now because there's so much shit in it, right? You know I what have, I mean? I have heard of that guy, actually. I didn't know he existed, and I haven't looked into his motivations either, and those are important to me because, mm -hmm. like, if he's doing that to dispel antiquated notions of, of food, dangerous food, uh, you know, risks, Yeah, then that's commendable as far as I'm concerned because we could be the same. We were just, you know, lambasting papaws for feeling right. that way about beef and pork, when maybe it, we're the same way with chicken, if this right. guy is correct. So, like, that's fine. But you know there's also this whole other thing on the Internet lately of, like, just being disgusting. Eating yeah. No, it ain't, no, it ain't that. Right. No, yeah. he kind of... When I'm you not... first said, like, he's eating raw chicken or whatever, uh, before I remembered what you were who you were talking about, my immediate reaction was to cringe at it that, because, like, that dude... No, no, no. Like, 
It ain't that. Bowls of like ball te- bull testicles. Bull that testicles guy? In I a, hate that in fucking a, guy. In a bowl of like that raw Jack- fucking yak milk or something. Yeah, and like, the testicle cereal or whatever. That dude that looks like Jack Santa, is that who you're talking about? Yes, I think he looks like if our buddy Smart Mark fell in the ooze from the Ninja Turtles universe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think he looks like. <laughs> he does. You know how those He's movies like yeah. Bebop and Rocksteady or whatever. Or they yeah. come out like if if that happened to Mark, yeah, he'd come out looking like the Liver King. I yes, think. yeah, the Liver King. No, this guy is not that. Um, you know that I, dude makes like millions of fucking dollars, of course, or like that, or has, and it's like, and he they even proved that he was doing all kinds of steroids because like. Yeah, of course the, he is. I, I know, but the conceit was no. Just I'm testicle. super jacked because I eat nothing but raw meat because that's what men are supposed to do. Real uh-huh. men, cavemen. It's cavemen. Cavemen were fucking badass. Cavemen were all jacked as fuck and got pussy and stuff. So that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to eat raw meat. I eat raw meat. I'm jacked. You eat raw meat. You quit being such a beta cut pussy bitch, right? That was his whole thing, and people bought into that, of course. And then they found out it got proven that like he was on. Ten thousand dollars a month of steroids the whole time, right? And but he still he took a big hit from that, as I understand it. Like he was like a fucking cultural phenomenon for a second there, and he's not on that level anymore. But he's still like he's still you know hitting as far as that goes. Like he's still making plenty of money off of it, and is still active and shit. And people still buy into his bullshit and stuff, despite the fact it's you know he's been called out, at, right? Uh, well, yeah, that don't, don't usually matter. affect uh, people with that base. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. The fucking words. You yeah. know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. That hits. That does hit. That does hit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, what I mean, what do you want to talk about today? something but you told me you wanted me to go last so yeah i do want you to go last because i want to talk trey i guarantee you that i'm about to say this and not only is every person listening or watching also you are going to be like yeah no fucking shit uh but i didn't know this just because i just always took what it was at face value but like do you know you know madame two sides the whack shit yeah, I've been to the one here in Hollywood, sort of. Did it I, hit for you? It, it's all right. I thought the boat. So they have a VR experience in there that's like a separate thing. And I took the boys to that once. But to get to it, you have to go through the wax museum. So it's kind of like sort of a. I don't know if you call it a cheat because you have to pay for the VR experience, but I'm saying it's a sort of a loophole because we got to go through the wax museum without paying for the wax museum experience because we were going to the other thing in the back of it. Well, that hits. So that was the context in when I, which I went through there, and the boys were with me, and I was like, oh, this will be cool, but they don't, it probably just because they didn't know who literally any of those people were. You right. know what I mean? It's like, even like Elvis or whatever, they're like, who's that? Does he hit? Does he yeah. stream? Is he a Twitch streamer? You know, like, fucking, so uh, it didn't have much of an impact on them, frankly. I find it impressive, but, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's cr- crazy impressive how they do those things, those wax sculptures, but, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not a massive devotee of Madame sure. Tussaud or nothing. Do you know anything about Madame Tussaud? I don't even know if that's a real person. Is that a real person? When do you think Madame Tussaud's the the, the wax museum place was was founded? Victorian era London, eighteen seventy five. Eighteen thirty five, bro. Mm. Eighteen thirty five. Madame Tussaud is indeed. Uh, a real person. I didn't know that. It like just at, feels to me like a Victorian Rip, yeah. type of thing. R- Ripley's too. It's like it's like kind of sideshowy and it's like carny, like that show Penny Dreadful. Yeah, like fucking those like wax museums would fit right in with that whole deal somehow. So agreed. Well, the, and the only reason that I I even looked this up is because a. I, before looking it up, I just assumed that was just the name of, they just named it that because it sounds like it. Yeah, hit. But I, I didn't thought that too. I'd, I'd always heard of it because like, you know, Conan would do bits on it on the show and I just knew Madame Tussauds, whatever. 
but I heard like someone talking about going to Madame Tussauds in Nashville. And I was like, what the fuck? Cause I, I didn't know they had chains. I didn't know it was a chain. And, uh, I was like, I thought it was just in Hollywood, but they got them motherfuckers all over. So I was like, let me click on that shit real quick. And yeah, started in 1835. Uh, Madame Tussaud, uh, she comes from a family. They, they grew up super poor. They grew up in Switzerland and all of the men in their family were executioners, right? So you remember well, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. But do you remember from your past episode, uh, if all the men in her family were executioners, that means that the only person that she could marry uh was an executioner. Right. right? Yeah, because they did not they were like outcast or whatever. They didn't yeah. generally hit for people, yeah. Yeah, so her mom didn't want this life for her, so she just, like, shipped her off in secret to her brother-in-law, and her brother-in-law was this dude named Philippe Corsos, or Corsés or something like that, uh, and he, what his job title was, was he was an anatomical modeler and doctor, uh, and here's the reason he was an anatom tonic, anatomical modeler. It's because doctors and schools, where they were training doctors and stuff, like, they needed cadavers but for some reason, I figured it would be the opposite, actually. But, like, for some reason at the time, getting dead bodies was becoming, like, harder and harder. And I guess harder relatively. I guess they were like, oh, people aren't dying like they did in 1810, you know, or whatever. Yeah, um, that's real wild to me. It's I crazy. thought back then you just walked outside and tripped over three corpses on your way to the apothecary or whatever. That's I thought that, you know. People walk with carts down the streets where you just throw your dead bodies onto it. You know, Anyone come, got any dead? Yeah, right. Bring yeah. bring out your dead. Yeah, like yeah. Fucking, yeah, twice a day or whatever. That's what yeah, I had no idea. Maybe they were getting scooped by the grave robbers. I feel like grave robbers were a big thing. Big thing. Then. And and I think they were doing it to because people were getting buried in jewelry and stuff. Either yeah. that or I'm sure at least some of them were probably porking the corpses, but like not everybody, I don't think. Right. So maybe it was hotly, it was a hotly contested market, very competitive market for corpses between like grave robbers and uh, medical schools and things of that nature. You know, that makes the most sense where it's like it's 1835. There's just more hospitals and shit now and they all need this. And like, yeah, people are still dying, but there's less of a pie to, you know, get from. But yeah, again, I when I read that, I was like, surely fucking not. But they were. And so what he would do is he would make lifelike corpses out of wax and sell them to the universities so that they could like, you know, ha I guess have their students. I mean, fucking sure. All you not. could do is point at point it. Point right? at Yeah. But right. I mean, you, you know, I mean, a lot still, of like high school labs and stuff have like that, that, you know, the skeletal, it's like a, you know what I'm talking about? The yeah. model of a dude where yeah. half of it is half. Like muscular and half of it is just bone. Looks like and, us. And you can point. Right, yeah, and be yeah. like, see, this is where that's where your liver be and stuff. So, I mean, I guess that's what he was doing. Back and they then. did need to point at things, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, they didn't know shit. They didn't know where how kidneys where kidneys was and stuff. So, just having a fake dead person where you could point, and be like, there, they're right there. It was hugely beneficial. I mean, that'd be beneficial to me. You know? I agree. I'd I mean, I'm not going to gonna use that information, but yeah, like, would hit. It would be informative even right. now. Well, so he did this, and he was also a doctor, but then, like, he really enjoyed making the life, the lifelike wax bodies, and in his spare time, he just started, he was like, I'm going to make them famous, I'm going to make famous people <laughs> into these fucking wax figures, you know what I mean? Like, why not? Like, it'll, it's fun, it gives me a challenge or whatever, uh, and what was really cool about this and why it really popped off for him because it wasn't at the actual, they didn't open the exhibition until later. It was just kind of like you came to his house and saw this shit, but like people were enamored with it because this was a time before photographs. Right. Yeah. I was about to say, I yeah. totally get it. Cause people, cause I was about to say like who even were famous people back then, but also right. like a lot of people, they didn't know what, they wouldn't know what famous people look like, right? Unless exactly. you saw them with your own two eyes. So. That would have no idea. So he would make them, I guess, based on like drawings. But who or, are we talking about? Like Lord Byron and fucking people like that? I guess. Painters and poets and shit. Like, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I guess you're right. They weren't movie stars. Charles Dickens was hugely yeah, famous. Right? He was huge. So like people like that, I guess. Charles Dickens and fucking whoever else. I can only think of like, fake people like sherlock holmes pretty yeah. big well yeah. arthur conan doyle 
But he yeah. wasn't born in 1835. No, no, no. Because he was boys with Houdini. So yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So like, and the only the only sur- surviving uh, when 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 Tussaud when she took over the business, um, and she you know she by the way ended up this is wild. I, my second page of notes is just gone. Um, but <laughs> she ended up taking taking over the business, and as it turned out, like he started teaching her this like as a kid. And turns out she like had a knack for it. And like, even by his own admission, she hit way harder at it than he did. Um, And the first one that she ever made was of her uncle Philippe. And that is the only surviving sculpture of Madame Tussauds, which is still um, in the original exhibition hall in Paris, um, which is insane to me. And again, I've lost my notes, but I knew I didn't have that much more because of what I want to get into next was I wanted to show you uh, some really terrible wax figures. Oh yeah, okay. Like what wh- from from where? Like who made these? This is this is uh that's a good question. Um, what I'm just, saying is, are these? I like, think they're from two sides. But so like ones they fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are from two sides. Hold on, I don't I'm know sure if these are like shit. amateur attempts. No, or, no, no, like, no. These are actual ones. Like you've probably seen a couple before because every now and then one will go viral. Like someone will like uh. Yeah. Just you know, go to a place and be like, well, who the fuck was thinking about this? Um, I do. Hold on, can you real quick? I missed something because I was I, I remember this picture I want to show you, and I went uh-huh. to search for the picture. And while I was searching for the picture, I missed this. If you said it, these sculptures were made by that dude, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, why yeah. is it called her name? What because does she have to do with it? She, because he was making them like kind of amateur wise like and then he teaches her how to do it. Turns out she's better at it and oh, that okay. is when they it decide to put the uh exhibition. She was 16 uh when that happened by the way and like during the uh oh i forgot this is this i found my notes during the french revolution uh madame tussauds she was imprisoned uh and while she was imprisoned she made death masks of executed nobles which is kind of badass yeah what i've heard of death mask before what is that is that other people wear it in honor of the person that's dead or you put it on the person who has died like when uh, right. a death mask is the likeness of a person's face after their death usually made by taking a cast or impression of the corpse uh yeah and the main purpose of the death mask from the middle ages until the 19th century was to serve as a model for sculptors in creating statues and busts of the deceased person okay so that was like uh, she was doing that for pragmatic reasons yeah um it also it takes around four months and more than five hundred precise measurements, one hundred and fifty photographs, uh, a hundred and fifty kilograms of clay, and more than two hundred thousand pounds to make each one of the uh, of the now, wax figures. Nowadays, now, yeah, right? yeah, because now was, it she does. had she was doing it with zero photos. It was zero, yeah, absolutely. Um, which is wild. Also, were they getting these famous people to like sit for them or something? Do you know what I mean? Like, how'd they get people to agree to that? Or were they I fucking freehand in this at the beginning? Because that's really wild. If you're doing that like for memory or something, right? That part I'm not seeing in my notes, but like, because how if you're total fucking nobody, how you gonna get Charles Dickens to sit me? Yeah. Like, let me make a full scale wax replica of you because I'm trying to hit with that. Right, you, no, you don't really get nothing out of it. Not a thing. <laughs> yeah, but um, so uh, it's I, weird. I have to assume that it was literally just like somebody they just bought a print where someone had like drawn them or yeah. something. I mean, that's the only fucking thing uh, that makes sense. Uh, so actually, in 1925, the the Madame Tussauds out where you you live, uh, there was a big fire, and most all of the statues were lost. However all of the molds remained intact. So they were able to just like fucking do it again, which is like a well done on their part. The museum was 1925. How long has this fucking thing been here? It, in uh, Hollywood. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This doesn't say in Hollywood. This just says, Matt, I I think this was the Paris one. Okay. Uh, Cause I was about to say, I, I mean, maybe, I don't know how long, I have no idea how long that one's been there, but I would not have thought that long ago. Yeah. Know. It, it doesn't say, and this is this is coming off uh, Madame Tussauds' actual like website, and it doesn't say, which I have to assume means if they don't 
if they don't say, then they're talking about the OG one. Uh, the museum, oh, dude, this is awesome. The museum was hit by a bomb in 1940 uh, during World War II, and it destroyed uh, 350 head molds and devastated a cinema, uh, which was part of the museum. Not awesome in that something got bombed, but like rad because bombs are wild. Um, bombs are wild. Yeah, actually, the first overseas branch of Madame Tussauds opened in Amsterdam in 1970, and now they've got 25 uh, across the globe. You see that? Yeah, Beyonce. Yeah. I don't think that one's horrible. Yeah, I don't think that one's that bad. Yeah, they kind of vary because I've looked through all these. They kind of vary. Like I, that one to me, like I think now, granted, you have to understand that we're not members. Of, I love Beyonce, but we're not members of the Beehive. So maybe, so maybe there's just something we're not seeing uh, that is sort of ruining the overall aura of Beyonce. But I think that one's fine. Uh, this one of Ariana Grande kind of makes her look like Mantis. Uh, yeah, you're right. It does. You know what I mean? Just something's a little I don't off. think I would know who that I is. I wouldn't either. If there wasn't a picture of, uh, of Ariana right beside it. Me either. And I would have known Beyonce. But yeah, that's just something uncanny valley about that one. Uh, that's Nicole Kidman, and that, absolutely that not. head is <laughs> yeah. a travesty. Dude, she she looks like she don't Ann have a Coulter. Peyton Manning fucking forehead. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, like... How do you fuck you that up? If you're famous enough to get one of these done of you, it's like something of an honor, I would think, and then, like, they unveil it. I know. And it looks like that, and, like, I wonder how these people, like, how she reacted to it. Although, I don't know. She's... If there's 25 different Madame Tussauds locations, maybe they don't even really care. If you're as famous right. as Nicole Kidman, maybe it isn't a it, you know even a noteworthy occurrence for that to happen. I don't know, but I was about to say how that would make you feel. Have you ever seen that uh that bust of Cristiano Ronaldo, the the world famous soccer yes. player? It's so goddamn funny, dude. And I think that was like a like a Hall of Fame bust, yeah, or the equivalent of the it. bronze like, one, right? Yes. Absolutely. You show the rest of these, and then we'll show everybody that please. if they've never seen it. I've already got it pulled up. It's so goddamn funny. Yeah, please. But anyway. Uh, that's, uh, see, I don't find that to be bad. I would have known that was Selena Gomez. Yeah, that one's not bad. Uh, Efron <laughs> looks dead as fuck right there. He looks yeah. like Pet Cemetery Zach Efron. He does, yeah. You've seen him lately? Yeah, he got weird looking for Iron he, Claw. He kind of, he almost looks like a not great wax sculpture of himself recently. Yeah, no disrespect. He, I mean, I guess that's inherently disrespectful. I, do you know the story of that? Well, so the only, no, the only thing that I speculated was like, well, he probably did some roids to look like Kerry Von Erich, uh, but also it seemed like see, he had had like cheek implants or because something. Because roids, they do impact your facial structure, right? right. Like that's the thing that happens. So, that's a theory. So now we're getting that back into Kate Middleton territory. Well, I just, that wouldn't make the, so much sense, though. That, that, I agree. The official story is that he had, like, a terrible motorcycle accident, broke his jaw, and had to have okay. reconstructive surgery. So it's one of those things that's like, yeah, I bet you feel like a dick now, huh? But right. there's people on the internet who have, like, of course, the way the internet be, pointed out that, like, the timeline don't work for that. Or right. whatever it's like and so some people don't believe that i'm not saying i don't believe that some people don't believe it and they think it's either steroids or plastic surgery or both but he do be looking wild nowadays yeah. if it was a, 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 a you know vehicle accident then i feel bad for him if it was the other things then you know he or not done what that, are you going to do yeah yeah oh, um britney yeah there's a couple of her and that one i kind of can't really tell it does look like her boobs from what i remember so that's fine um, that one's kind of funny because it's like they've got her on a pole, pole being wild. You right. Know? Like that part. Says, and I mean, you know, show me the lie. Yeah, right. They didn't put knives in her hand. So, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I guess she got off easy. They made uh, Ben Affleck look like Chaz Bono. Like, yeah, his mm -hmm. eyes was too close together. And uh, he don't look ugly. He just don't look like himself. No, not at all. That's fine. I think Robert Pattinson yeah. is. There's something a little off, but that's not like egregious. He's shiny. Opinion. Okay, I guess a lot of them are shiny. They They'd have to be, wax. right? I They're guess. Made of wax, yeah. Wax, yeah. I don't know that I would have known that was Jennifer <laughs> Lopez. That's pretty uh, rough. J-Lo, 
Jay Love's going to come up again here in a little bit. Oh, and good. It, and it's uh, it's a funny. It's funny. <laughs> good. <laughs> just want to say that they uh, did Leo so wrong, boy. Yeah, he looked like a drug addict. Right. He there. looks like, like Pet Cemetery Diaries. Fucking yeah. Sorry Leo. to use the same joke twice, but he looks like Pet Cemetery Devin Sala. Like not even Pet Cemetery Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I can mm. tell that's Jennifer. I Aniston. can too, but it's she looked real angular yeah like, don't hit yeah i don't know how else to put it speaking of efron and the the surgeries and stuff have you seen uh you know what buckle fat implants are or no, it's not implants buckle fat removal book buccal Buc- fat Buc- Bucal. that's that, how you pronounce it Bucal. yeah and that's where they take from your cheeks right I do not understand why anybody I'm trying to get that. is doing that. Well, I guess I can understand why you might do it. You have a very, uh, right. You got them jowls, but hold on now. Hold on now. Let's rewind what? for just a second. I don't see why anyone on earth would want to do that. Oh, but you're right. You're a special case. You need to do whatever it is. The fuck that you like, you get why I'd want to do it though. You have jowls. So right. Yeah. But dude, starlets are doing right. It, and and they, they look fine. It, they don't look fine. I mean, they look fine. Before, no, no, no. But, I'm saying before. It makes them look like ghoulish. Wow, like they, they look gaunt and like sunken. Their jaws are sunken. They look like, yeah, go, they look ghoulish. I don't. They know do look ghoulish. It. I don't no. know why it hits for people. But they anyway. look like Stepford wifey type things. Yeah. you know, like a, a, a not Brad Pitt looks like a porn producer. Uh huh. He does. Don't he hit. Look- and they did him wrong again. <laughs> Look how shiny. <laughs> that's that's a, a river runs through it, Brad Pitt. Yeah, or a... Ah, shit. What was that? Thelma uh, and Louise. Yeah, no. The, is it Legends of the Fall? He kind yeah, of Legend, that. that's what I meant. That's what I meant, yeah. Legends of the Fall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hemsworth, they took away sort of his natural kind of glow. You know, they kind of just pasted him up. But, I mean, you know, it, it looks like him all right. Uh, there's one more. Oh, uh, yeah, Bieber. Phew, boy. Looking twinkalicious. He actually, looks like a, he actually looks like a little lesburn is what he looks yes, like. Yes, he does. Now, there's Which, anything wrong with I that. Mean, no, there's no. Of course, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's also one of those, like, you know, I'm sure the designers would be like, well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What you want me to do? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. What you want me to do? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you really putting that on me? Come on, dude. Uh, So, you know, fair enough. I think Rihanna's pretty solid, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, not bad. Uh, Beebs again, which... uh that's not horrible. He, I think he looks better as the wax there I than he does in the I bet that one regular. Him, probably. Yeah, yeah, right, for sure. He's pretty shredded. Timberlake looking wild. I don't care for that. He kind of got a stank face on. He do have a stank face. I don't give a fuck what they do to Kim Kardashian. Uh, I could definitely, <laughs> I can definitely tell that that's her. That's not the part of her made out of wax that I'm interested in the most, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Her butt is what I'd like to see. That's the one that fucking Jesus Christ. Look at Naomi Campbell here. Yeah, that's wild. That uh, don't hit, dude. She looks like a deer. Yeah, she do. Wait. I, this is redundant. Like, hold on. I can't. Tell which one is the... I genuinely can't. I know. That's what I meant. That's what I'm saying. He's kind of a, he's kind of a living wax sculpture. I mean, yeah, robotic. he really is, man. You're correct. Uh, yeah, Zuckerberg. If y'all are only that, listening. If y'all are only listening to this part, definitely ain't hitting for you, but what are you going to do? Yeah, we're so sorry, and I'm about to wrap it up. Uh, I will. I promise I'll wrap it up. This is I mean, I've got street. some pictures and shit, too, but I'm going to be also talking. Michelle, they that tone ain't right. You know what I mean? Michelle Obama, they got her tone all wrong, bro. How did they do with her dick? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, that's still uh, a thing. Still a thing out there. That's a good one. That's that's a good one to end on. Uh, Miley and Miley Cyrus. I mean, they've done her super dirty right here. Like uh, that, just super don't hit for me. Um, anyways, anyways, <laughs> you see your pictures. Yeah, I apologize to anybody who is just listening, but let me use this uh, as an opportunity to once again inform you that I think your your experience of this show would be a lot better. Uh, if you would also watch on watchpoa.com. So this God is the Ronaldo damn, it's worse so, than I thought. Yeah, right. And I remember. <laughs> it's so rad. Holy and look, I guess, I guess they got it fixed, you know, and I mean, hey, it's a good change. But 
you, it's it, a it, good it, change. You see that though, like you see that they changed it, and you're like, why didn't you just, just do, do that? that? Well, I'm assuming whoever Budget. they got to do it, you know, fucked it up and didn't hit at it or whatever, and then they didn't want to spend the money to do it again. They're like. Ah, Nobody will notice. <laughs> right. <laughs> they put it out there and it became a worldwide, it got memed on around the globe. That's but, just uh, crazy to me because, like, we're talking about, and I know there's a lot of just Americans that don't use their brain a lot, maybe about to hear this and go, What are you talking about? Ronaldo is one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. In the whole world, one of the most famous, one of the wealthiest athletes. How the fuck? Do they not have whoever the top man is doing his statue? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, people be cheap uh, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, so the person I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh, hold on. I, let's, take a, let's take a break real quick to for, hear from our sponsors, and then we'll okay. be right back, and we will hear about. I, I'll tell you when we get back. <laughs> okay. Enjoy these sponsors. Y'all, I've always been looking for, you know, a safe way to chill out, relax, and, you know, sort of uh, get a little stress-free thing going. But the problem is with a lot of THC products, uh, I end up just getting anxiety, and I think the government is outside of my door uh, knocking to invade me. But the thing about our friends at Mood is that it's I find it to be just a creative buzz i've got a good focus i'm energized and i don't have any of those kind of cloudy uh feelings and now i'm happy to say that i am fully back on the thc game and have no regrets it's tremendous mood is known for their federally legal thc by the way now they're adding their most potent product yet to the lineup the new hemp based thca Flower, baby, the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings. Like, you got your flower, you got your gummies and vapes. By the way, I'm a gummy man, but y'all know that. I'm a big child. And for a limited time, Mood has given our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. All you got to do is visit hellomood.com and use our code POA. Trey, you get in the mood, don't you? I do get in the mood. Yeah. I mean, I'm like you with regular old THC, your more standard cannabis products. I've always been one to, uh, as you, as we've put it for years, commune with the void, yep. uh, which is another way of putting curl up into a fatal position and fear the universe for mm -hmm. a couple hours. Uh, so, you know, I, I was skeptical about this at first, but Moods products is THCA stuff, the stuff that they're doing. It somehow impacts me completely differently and I don't get none of that. It just, uh, it just hits, you know, I did the, the, I, the focus one and also the chill one. The chill one is insane uh, because, like, you're I happy. Sleep, I, well, you're just it, happy. It also helps. Like, I sleep like a log on that yeah. stuff somehow. Like, you just lay your head down and then, like, next thing, you know, I'm wanting to wake up multiple times throughout the night on this. No, next thing I know, it's, you know, the sunlight shining in, which upsets me, but it happens, well, you know. And also, and dude, you remember when we used to complain about people would talk about taking some and then going to sleep, and we're like, I can't sleep as much as I try to. Yeah. I just sit there and commune with the voices in my head. Yep, but on no mood, you can. It also, I'm a gummy man, too. These are the gummy varieties I'm talking about, and they're a very tasty and very uh, uh, lovely gummy option. So, yes, mood certainly hits for me. And this new THCA flower they got, just so y'all know, THCA converts into THC when you heat it, so you still get the classic marijuana high. They've got 10 high-inducing strains, the most potent they've ever offered over there at Mood. Mood puts an end to the guessing games with federally legal forms of THC extracted from hemp plat plants. They're all, all their products are regularly tested in third-party labs sourced from small family farms and pesticide free okay they got different strains for specific moods from euphoric to energized creative to chill like i said very versatile products that go for whatever mood you're looking for however you want to take thc mood has got you covered it's good for beginner and veteran users they got gummies they got flour they got pre-rolls and so 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 much more so try moods new thca flour today for a limited time only get 20 percent off your first order and a free thca pre-roll just go to hellomood.com and use the promo code poa that's hello m o o d dot com code poa for 20 percent off your order and a free thca pre-roll holler at it this here episode is sponsored by the good folks at blue chew let's talk about sex y'all wainers and stuff fellers mm -hmm. 
You remember the days when you were always ready to go, always ready to get up and throw down, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean, talking about your wiener getting hard. We remember that. We all do, but, you know, we're pushing 40, me and Joe, and as you get older, things change, all right? But that, it don't have to be that way. You can get those days back. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence back in the bedroom. Here's how. Listen up. BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead to get down or just be ready to get down whenever an opportunity Comes up, the process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. That's the best part. It's all done on the internet there, which means no more visits to the doctor's office, no more awkward wiener conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, bumping into your high school librarian. You don't have to worry about none of that because Bluetooth tablets are made right here in the U.S. of A, prepared and shipped direct to your door in a very discreet package. Joe, tell them about it. Oh, my God, it makes my dick harder than just eating one cupcake. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of people are like, okay, but, like, does it really work? First off, I'm here to tell you, yes. We've also had a six-year relationship with Blue Chew, and I personally uh, wouldn't have done that if it didn't work. It's absolutely tremendous. And, again, I think a lot of people shy away from it because they're like, well, I don't have a problem down there. I don't either. It's just a extra confidence thing. It's just a, like, you know, some days you're tired, you know, and maybe everything's not, the fireworks aren't shooting off, but like you want to please your lover. Well, Blue Chew can be there to be your tag team partner, baby. My favorite time of the month is when that white envelope shows up, and it's my wife's favorite time of the month, too. And Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex, by the way. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. That can't be right. Well, it sure is. When you use our promo code POA at checkout, all you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code POA to receive your first month absolutely free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Skew. Skew. All right, and we're back. Cho, you ever heard of my boy, Gurban Ghoulie Birdie Muhammadov? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't want to say it before we went to break. <laughs> I knew, I knew me, me saying this dude's name would just be funny. <laughs> say it again. Gerben Ghoulie Birdie Muhammadov. That sounds like my uncle trying a magic spell from Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Say it one more time. <laughs> say it one more time. Say it one more time. Uh, Say it one more time. Conjure up some fucking shawarma Spam. or something. Yeah. yeah. Gerben Gooley, Birdie Muhammadov. No, I've never. By the way, it. I'm not sure that I'm saying either of those. Yeah, right. you are. You're, hey. that's, his, that's his first and last name. He you is, might not be saying it correct, but you ain't saying it wrong. You know what I'm saying? He is. Gerben Gooley, Birdie Muhammadov is the uh, glorious. That and That sounds like a whole basketball team that's about to play <laughs> – yeah. Team USA in the Olympics. He is the glorious and supreme leader of Turkmenistan, um, which he has been since 2006. He's not technically the president anymore. He, he, he oh, this uh, a new guy? This a fucking brand new guy? I mean, 2006. I know, just I mean, mean, I thought we were. I thought this was like a an older guy. That name. That's just wow. Oh, he's alive guy. right now. Yeah. Like, and and he's still in charge. So, like, first of all, motherfucker was a dentist, right? Like. Just a regular old pull your tooth out dentist, as Chris Rock would say. And, uh, but he got appointed into the government of Turkmenistan and the Ministry of Health because it don't say this outright, but I'm reading between the lines here because his daddy had been a senior, uh, interior ministry officer. So his dad had like worked in the government. He became a dentist. So he got into in the Ministry of Health in the government. And he went from there to being put on the cabinet of ministers and, and, and all this stuff and rose higher and higher in the government. And then somehow, after the previous supreme leader of Turkmenistan, uh, a dude named, man, this one's even harder. His last name is Nyatsov, Nyatsov, fucking Sapam, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Saparmat, 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 I can't do it, so, Sepamirat, Sepamirat Nyatsov, I think. Sepamirat Nyatsov. Yeah, Nyatsov. That guy was the previous supreme leader. Supreme leader means dictator, right? 
I mean, I, I, I keep saying Supreme Leader. Their actual yeah. title is President. But, yeah, oh. I keep calling them Supreme Leader because, yes, it, they're, they are dictators. Right. Nyatsov had been a dictator before, and, uh, you know, this dentist, my man Gerben Gooley, he rose up <laughs> through the ranks and became like his right-hand man when Nyatsov dies in 2006. He successfully takes over the, the government and becomes the president. He's been reelected three times, Cho. Last time, most recently, got 97.4% of the vote. Pretty good. Ooh, pretty good. Very popular what's his, feller over there. Uh, what's his, uh, do you have his stat line on defenestrations? Yeah, oh, buddy. <laughs> through the roof, out the door. <laughs> out the window. Out the window, yeah, as it were. Um, uh, but... Anyway, yeah, he took over as president 2006 to 2022. In 2022, he, like, passed it down to his son, Sarp Sarpar, Sarpar, Sardar, Sardar. And, uh, but then his son, he was like, all right, my son could be the president now. Uh -huh. But then his son turned around, and this just happened, like, last year. His son turned around and appointed him the, like, leader of the Supreme People's Council. Ah, uh, like high chairman or some kind of fucking title like that. And then he altered their constitution to make that guy, which was his dad, <laughs> yeah. more popular than or more powerful than the president. <laughs> so he's still like the main guy in charge, despite having stepped down as president in the name of, you know, whatever. Posterity. That's a baller move on his son's part, by the way, yeah. to be like, I know I won't be the president. Here's the thing, though. I don't want to do no president shit. So I'm going to keep being the president and I'm going to make you this. And then I'm going to change the law where you got to do all the shit. So when he took over for Nyatsov uh, in the 2000s, he came in, uh, you know, ostensibly under a policy of reform, right? Because Nyatsov had been a straight up dictator with a cult of personality and all that stuff too. Nyatsov had built in front of the palace a, a like 20 foot golden statue of himself yeah. that rotated uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week so that it always faced the sun. Right. Nice. And uh, when my man Gerben Gooley came in, <laughs> he, he, uh, he was like, listen, we ain't gonna do none of that shit no more. Right. Then he, and he took down that statue of Nyatsov, his predecessor. And then Instead of that statue, he replaced it uh, with this one. Here's my first picture. Hey, tell me when you can see that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a picture of him <laughs> riding a golden horse yeah. upon a giant cliff of, cliff of pure white marble. So much more tasteful. Yeah. Uh, much more discreet. More, much more discreet, subtle, yeah. nuanced. You get, yeah. So that's what he did. He then, uh, he also like, he, at the time he like uh he called for reform of education and health care and prisons and all this stuff and like he acted like he was gonna you know like be better right but then the way he you know you can see with how he built that um that statue of himself like all that was bullshit he's one yeah. of the only world leaders he was well, actually he was among eight world leaders to receive an ig Nobel prize Oh in, yeah, in, we talked about those. We did talk about those. He he he. Not he on got, this show though, right? He I can't remember. It I was. Remind us. We we didn't. It was on Well Read. Remind our audience uh, what the ignoble. You sure is. about that? Pretty sure. Because I'm pretty sure Drew was talking about it with us. Either way, I, who gives I, a shit? Remind I don't everybody. Think so I mean, I'll remind everybody, but I think it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The ignoble prize is a satiric prize awarded annually to celebrate unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research research or fields yeah. uh honor achievements that make people laugh and then make them think but basically it's like roasting scientists right. for doing dumb shit but in this case eight world leaders received one in 2020 for using the COVID 19 pandemic to teach the world that politicians can have a more immediate effect on life and death than scientists and doctors can because you know a whole bunch of his people died because he ain't do shit about COVID and whatnot right. so uh, and but then so that happened and then tw his response to that I mean it wasn't his direct response to that but shortly after that uh -huh. all happened in November of 2020 he unveiled a new golden statue of his favorite breed of dog the Central <laughs> Asian Shepherd so <laughs> them fat little necky ones right that was his response now I think they're pretty big uh well not little but like they're 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 they fat but they got the neck 
I mean, I you got a picture of it? I, I it was just right there beside the other statue, but I didn't want to call it out yet because I hadn't gotten to that part. But I'll yeah. bring that same picture back up. Uh, yeah, the neck. He do have the neck. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. And when you write, you write, you know. But yeah. uh, anyway, <laughs> he's not just a leader, dude. He's a man of many talents. He uh, Pulling teeth. Yes, right. He also, he had Jack Nicholas come to Turkmenistan and build him a golf course, which he did. And of on the day the golf course opened, uh, Gerbenguli hit a hole in one on his no very way. first round. Absolutely. That's man, right. At least, at least according to Turkmenistan media. Dude, you know, <laughs> you know what, man? Like, you hear about dictators hitting hole in ones all the time. That's right. And like, it's kind of crazy. You know it what I mean? Crazy. It's like, what are the coincidences that every time, like how, like hitting a hole in one is like a one in a million, more than that for like a, an amateur golfer. But these goddamn dictators, man, they just seem to be doing it all the time. And that, and that make you jealous, Cho? Or somebody, yeah, a little you know, bit. I think I need to so take much time and effort into, into golfing. You ain't, you've never hit a hole in one, have you? On a real no, course? No. Right. Yeah, and then these dictators out here just making it look very, easy. Very come very close uh, twice in my life, but yeah, I need to take some dick, I guess. Take, take. I thought you said take, and I was like, I didn't follow it all for a second. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't see how getting butt fucked is going to help. Get you a record deal. You know say, what I mean? Like, like, I don't know. Puff Daddy can give you holes in one, <laughs> but uh, he likes holes though. But do uh, Gerben Gooley. He's got a lot. Of, he's a man of many talents. Like I said, he's not just a golfer. He's also uh, quite an accomplished musician. Let me share this screen. Let's see here. Yeah. Tell me when you can see it. Did I can. Remember? Okay. That's his grandson there. See, my man Gerber Gooley on the keys. <laughs> but that's not all. He also plays the guitar. They're like shredding. I wonder if he's ever done a duet with Steven Seagal. You know, Steven Seagal still hits over there in those countries. He says he writes all these songs, too. <laughs> People just stand there all dressed exactly the same, clapping in unison. You saw him uh, suiting up in that uh, that race car yeah. uh, get up there at track suit. He, uh, <laughs> they were having a race. They were having a race in Turkmenistan once, and he was not supposed to be part of it. I think he was supposed to be present, just like spectating. They had actual race car drivers and stuff there on an actual racetrack. And he pulled up in a brand new Bugatti. Yeah. And was like, hey, I'm racing in this shit. And yeah. they were like, okay, I guess. And then they, of course, all had to, he he won. He won, come in yeah. first place. They all had to let him win. Um, but, yeah, he's also quite the strong man. Had another another video for you. Very, he, he's, a big, he's a big gym rat, big weightlifter. One of the strongest dudes in Turkmenistan. Look at that. Get his adulation. Look at this. Solid gold bar, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Gerben Gooley, bitch. The, look at that. Just hold it right there. Pretty impressive. I mean, I guess if it's solid gold, it weighs more, but don't the Maybe. bar only weigh 35 pounds? 45. 45, uh, standard yeah. Olympic bar is 45 pounds. And also, like, I'm not, uh, I don't know if, if, if uh, gold is more, is actually heavier than, what is that? Iron? Steel? Yeah, steel. <laughs> that they make those out of? I don't know. Yeah. Mine definitely ain't stainless steel, for sure. It's right. It'd be looking, rust. Look, it do, it do be rust. It's looking a little, looking a little rough. Um, I'm but, a band guy myself. So, yeah. You know. Bands, they, they do. They hits. make her dance. Yeah, the bands do make her dance. You're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, God damn it. Where's the... There's nothing in 2019. He, he actually pulled a bit of a Kate Middleton for a while. He like disappeared and everybody was saying he was dead. Uh, and then he obviously was not, we've already spoiled that, but this is how he made his return after a few months of being presumed dead. <laughs> Turkmenistan leader drives around flaming crater in first <laughs> footage. <laughs> Seth rumors. He gets in this kick-ass rally truck hauling ass, bro. Look at him. Hell yeah. Fucking just getting it around that, which is called the, I've heard of that before. It's called the 
portal to hell or crater to hell or something like that. That's like a, it's some kind of like coal deposit or some kind of flammable substance deposit they were mining years ago and some dumbass Turkmenistan motherfucker set it on fire and it's been burning literally ever since. Um, I don't mean this in any type of way. I'm just going to say the words because I don't know how to say them any other way. Um, I'm ignorant to this region. Does Turkmenistan hit no. in any way? Okay, right. <laughs> and are they right? Oh hell right. no! I didn't. Think, they're all they're, they all starving to death and eating bugs and shit. Right. While he builds gold statues of himself and well, he no, says, no 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 he, oh. he says that like poverty don't exist there and well, then, stuff. It's one of the way. It's like North Korea. I get it, but I'm Absolutely. saying like I, okay. Let me rephrase then. Like I get that it's like North Korea, but we still like we worry about Kim Jong Un because he might pull some shit. Do this guy ever threaten to pull shit on us or have the ability to pull shit on us? I don't think so. I think he's content to sit over there and and ride his horses and, you know, drive his cars and throw his ops out windows and stuff. Um, Well, so far he's the best dictator I've ever heard of. I mean, and that's, you know, that's like saying I've got the the best ball cancer, but like still. Yeah, he also accomplished uh, marksman. Uh, God damn it. I cannot. I wonder if they've like scrubbed it. There's this video of him. Probably. There's this video of him. I can't find. I wonder if it, they got it like taken off the internet or something because he looks so stupid. Or maybe I could have. I don't know if I looked harder. I'm, if I looked longer, I could find it. But uh, you can see him here. He does shit like this all the time. Look how fucking ge- kitted up he is, dude. Hell yeah. Look at that. Ready to rock. He's a, uh, you know, a badass military motherfucker too. Got these combat skills. There's a video of him doing this, but he's riding a bicycle. Uh, yeah. Like he just rides a bicycle down. But look at that. Fucking like it's nothing. Hey, that ain't, that ain't easy. I he Bro. He had one of those things underneath him. That's, oh, one, of those, that's one of those assistance machines. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, riding bikes and shooting targets while he's on a bike um, but yeah, he doesn't just play the, the keyboard and the guitar and write his own songs and sing his own songs. He also is a DJ. Yeah. He DJs all their uh, palace parties and shit. But yeah, his people are, you know, fucking starving and he builds everything out of white marble. That's the other thing too. He loves the color white. White really super hits for him. He, uh, hmm. he outlawed any color of vehicle besides white a few years ago what and, yeah and when he did it and i think at first i think it was just in the city and i think event like the capital city but then eventually it was the whole country and a lot of them were like my donkey's not white is that okay <laughs> you know I can, what's a car i'm That's dying <laughs> anyway um, that has got a hit for criminals yeah but they uh the people in the city, like the powerful people, some of them had cars that were black and shit like that, and they all got confiscated. And then he said, we'll give it back to you, but you got to pay to paint it white or you can't have it no more. And he makes every building that's built in the Capitol be built out of white marble. It's called the city of white marble because it's got more white marble structures than any other city on earth um, because of his you know his fascination with the color and the material but again he does white all... marble does hit white marble does hit of course it does yeah but you know so does feeding your people i would well, think dude, i guess you paint, i mean him. bruh like that's out of the equation we got to focus on the positive here he sounds like a good time you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right. He also, he's pretty tight with your boy Putin, naturally. Um, yeah. And, and to show this once in 2017, he gave him a gift of a dog, which he presented <laughs> to him that way. Holding his neck. Which is funny to me. Putin yeah. looks wholly unimpressed by that. Yeah. Uh, I make soup out of dog. But yeah, it's always like groups like Human Rights Watch and stuff like that. Like Turkmenistan is always ranked near the very bottom of every list of like freedom of press, freedom of speech, for any of that type of shit. Democracy rankings. They're always near the very most oppressive regimes. Like they're always at the very bottom of the list, usually above only North Korea and also uh, Eritrea, which I don't know as much about. I need to look them. That's an African country where I think they still literally have slaves and shit. Yeah, and so Turkmenistan comes in only above them. So it seems to really not hit over there, but he sure is a character and fancies himself a fancy motherfucker. So, And also, I just really wanted to say his name a bunch. Um, get, get, do, do it one more time. Yeah. 
yeah, Garbin Gooley, my boy Garbin Gooley, fucking whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I mean, make sure I want to have it for a million pages yeah, just yes. for his name. Yeah, my boy Garbin Gooley, Birdie Muhammadov. <laughs> Garbin Gooley, Birdie Muhammadov. Which again, probably not how you actually say it, but right. giving it my the old college try. But anyway, that's all the things that hit about him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I thought that would be. Fun. Oh, like one. Oh, I said J Lo was going to come up. Two yeah. things happened in 2013. One in 2013, and I found this so funny because of a dream I had about you that I've told you about numerous times. The one where um, you do a cameo for the Filipino dictator. Uh, in 2013, J Lo <laughs> got paid by China to sing Happy Birthday to my man Gerben Gooley, which like yeah. couldn't have been easy. You know what I mean? Happy, happy birthday, Happy birthday, birthday Gerben Gooley, Gerben Gooley, Birdie <laughs> Muhammad. Happy, yeah, right. <laughs> And she got in all kinds of shit for it and had to apologize and stuff. And I thought that was hilarious. Also in 2013, he participated in a horse race, which of course they were going to let him win, but he fell off his horse and they, uh, they tried to, re- they tried to like bury the fact that that happened and like threatened everyone who was in attendance at the race and said, if you have footage of that, destroy it. If you don't, we will kill you. You yeah. no one can ever find out about this. But somehow it leaked eventually. I mean, he was fine. He fell off a horse, but was fine. But they tried. It's just very, embarrassing. They tried very hard to, you know, keep anyone from ever knowing that that had ever happened. So yeah, that's Gerben Gooley Birdie Muhammadov for you, one last what? time. So yeah, let's do some airmail, I guess. I, I love. Hey, let me grab a beer real quick. Two seconds. Sorry, bruh. It is. Uh, it's like. It's the it's the sun being it's the sun being out and it's still being a little windy. As you can see, I'm wearing the um, flowery shirt here, right? And I got to tell you, the biggest triggers for me are spring and fall. Big, I have to have a beer. I just have to. Yeah, it does you know? hit. Listen, uh, Katie is lighting me up on this phone over okay. here, even though she knew I was doing this. Okay, how about this one? Uh, Yankee problems. Hey, guys, you've probably explained this, but... <laughs> You probably explained this, but is something being Raven a South thing, or is it actually a reference to the Disney show? The show is the only place I ever heard it, but of course, I've grown up my whole life in Maine. Love everything you all do. Cheers, Luke. Yeah, it it is. It It's from, you know, the Disney show, That's So Raven, but we just started using it like if something super typical happened, like if, you know, uh, Drew screamed at a cop or something, we'd be like... Or Drew farted on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. Or if Drew wrecked our rental car. Yeah. Or if Drew Drew was mean to somebody in a production meeting. Or if Drew threw a plate at your face for no reason. Or Uh, a ball at your kid. Yeah, if Drew did any of those things. We'd be like, man, that sure was Raven. That's so Raven. And then Raven just became a term for like... The void. The t- what, typical, typical any, fashion of what someone would do, and not just someone, but also things like you know, like the Tennessee Volunteers choking and blowing it is very raven, raven so uh, raven. And then it went further into like the ravens themselves. The ravens are the forces in the universe that cause things like that to happen. Things that are raven, yeah. Uh, so yeah so the ravens roost it's the ravens or yeah if you think some shit like that's about to happen and you know the ravens are roosting we probably sound like fucking complete lunatics we do but i'll I'll give you just one quick example and then we'll leave uh yeah often if like we have a a show that we're trying to get made and we feel good about it trey will go i feel good about this but you know the ravens are circling anyways speaking of trey go see him on the road go to treycrowder.com for Mm -hmm. all those tickets any specific date you want to plug I'll be in Seattle and then Van- well Vancouver first and then Seattle, Vancouver, Canada, and then Seattle, Washington in uh, mid April. Trackrider.com. Come see. Okay. And bonuscory.com for my stuff. And y'all stay fancy, motherfuckers. We love you. Watch us at watchpoa.com. Skew. Yep. Skew. Here's Lydia Loveless. One, two, mm-hmm. three, four. One, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs. 
putting on airs, putting on airs.